delight to have a gal that uh, has been anticipating the Calgary Stampede for probably the last 12 months and maybe some years because this runs in her family. Fallon Many Wounds, congratulations. Uh, First Nations Princess for 2020. What does that feel like? Oh, it feels amazing. I mean, despite the fact that COVID has happened, I still been we've still been out here trying to get people to come and, you know, keep a safe distance but still be able to celebrate that community spirit, which is really awesome. In the run-up to Calgary, you were still anticipating a full show with the parade and the midway, the chuck wagon races, the rodeo. How much different has it been than what they told you it was going to be like? Oh, it's completely different. Apparently, we're supposed to have um, more than 100 events during the 10 days, so it's it's, it's, it's quite a shock that COVID happened and, you know, it kind of took that away from me, but we're still looking forward to 2021. What kind of training do you go through? What kind of coaching uh, prior to it? Do you do some run-up events like in June and maybe even as far back as May? We practice a lot of impromptu questions and also just uh, proper etiquette and just a lot of um, like speech um, practice and whatnot. It seems like, and we're here for, of course, uh, the food trucks and food trailers, and in particular, the day you're here, it's for the mini donuts, and that's one of the favorites. Talk about that for us. Yeah, the mini donuts, it's pretty much like a tradition for Stampede, right? And it's just awesome that uh, just a mini donut can bring so many people together. It's, It's amazing. What about the spirit in Calgary? We saw a great, great grand entry for uh, the parade marshal last Friday and lots and lots of people enthusiastic. Even though it's not happening in reality, I think the energy is still around the city and around the area. Oh, it definitely is. And you can really tell by the amount of people that show up to all the food trucks and the donut, the donuts and the pancake breakfast so, as well. You have a great story to share with us. In just a moment, I'm going to get you to tell us. This runs in the family. You're not the first princess. We're back with more for KMC Sales after this word. The World Pro Chuck Wagons are not racing this year, but that doesn't mean the WPCA's inventory of unique souvenirs and clothing won't be available. In fact, merchandising manager Ken Melvin has a full line of 2020 items for you to choose from. We brought in a real cool sweatshirt. Uh, actually, it's screened with embroidery across, so that looks really good. Uh, we've got this, which we're going to keep on going from last year. Uh, what I've got on, we have two styles. It's a plaid shirt. From ball caps to new ladies and men's jackets, WPCA merchandise is made to fit every size, every taste. Spoil yourself this year with your favorite items from KMC sales, including the classiest belt buckle you'll ever wear and a Kurt Benzmiller men's or ladies watch. And don't forget your 2020 Spectator Guide, just $10 this year. Or with orders over $60, you'll receive your very own copy free. Place your orders today online at kmcsales.net. Fallon, tell us a little bit about the history that goes back several years. And you're kind of uh, the also ran because you have a cousin or something that uh, was involved and became princess here at the Calgary Stampede for First Nations. Yeah, she she's actually my auntie. Yeah, she was the princess um, a couple years ago, and yeah, just watching her do it really inspired me to do it as well. And being able to um, just get to experience it at least for a little bit this year has has been really awesome. Now, a new village renamed last year. It used to be right along the Elbow River, as a matter of fact, and ran around the outside of the park. And the teepees and everything were set up, and many, many people came just to visit that. But they've moved to a great new location. Have you ch- had a chance to visit through there? I definitely did, and I just love that they had the name change as well. You know, we're we're moving forward, and we're uh, getting rid of the word Indian, which is very beautiful because we're actually known as First Nations or Native, so it's just it's just awesome. What about some of the people from your own home area? Have they said, wow, congratulations, I want to do that sometime? Are you encouraging, are you motivating others to follow in your footsteps? I definitely am, especially the youth. And I have a younger sister, so I'm pushing her forward to do it as well. What kind of a commitment is it when you decide to do it? I know we don't learn until early in the spring who it is and uh, what's involved, but uh, you must know lots of time in advance and do lots of preparatory things. Oh, definitely. You can't come into this position being shy. You really have to embrace yourself and just really push through all the limits and, you know, uh, you know, just achieve all the goals you want to do. 
And as tradition has it, there is also a queen and uh, two princesses in waiting. Do you al- do a lot of combined activities with them? Yeah, we do. We're actually pretty close, and it pretty much becomes a sisterhood throughout the year. Is there any travel when it's over? Do you get to go to some of the other uh, rodeos and maybe chuck wagon races or events that are taking place? And what about within your First Nations? Do they look at you a little differently and say, hey, come on and be our queen as well? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of people have stopped calling me Fallon and it's just princess. It's been an amazing experience so far. What's your ambitions? When you're done this, what's the next step in life for Fallon? Well, I'm a personal trainer and a nutritionist, so I just want to hop back into action and just keep motivating people to stay healthy. Did that get interrupted when you found out you were going to be the First Nations princess for this year? It did, and as long as, or same with COVID being around too, so it really put a, a halt for a little bit, but I'm hoping by 2020 that everything will be cleared up and I can get back into action. Is there a chance that you could be back next year? Because this one really hasn't been the true Calgary Stampede that most of the fans, most of the tourists want to come and see. Many of them are waiting now for an opportunity to come back next year. Would it ever be nice if you could come back next year? Oh, for sure. And that's what I'm hoping. We're just keeping our fingers crossed and just taking it day by day. So I'm really hoping I could. Follow many wounds. Congratulations. First Nations Princess for 2020 here at the Calgary Stampede.